we announced that we were trading our cruising catamaran for a performance catamaran, a lot of people couldn't quite wrap their heads around that. Like, you've already got a great boat. Why the switch? Why this need to go fast? And what we're about to experience today is the reason why we're switching. And it has nothing to do with racing or going fast. Sailors are all about the journey. Clearly, because sailing isn't the fastest way to get anywhere. And our decision to trade our cruising boat for a performance boat is all about maximizing the journey. Okay, Captain Stitch, what's the plan for today? We have very light winds. We're just gonna go out for a little sail, see how TTR does with like seven to 10 knots of wind. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we get to 10 knots of wind and have some calm, slow, comfortable sail. We call that champagne sailing. Day. Absolutely, I love that champagne sailing. <laughs> Although it's a little early, maybe we'll start with some sparkling <laughs> maybe, water. <laughs> maybe, yeah. I was going to say mimosas, but maybe just a little casual. There we go. It'll be a good day. The shape of that sail. It's like it just happens. They put it up and it just is shaped like that. What does like that mean? The perfect shape to get the most aerodynamic performance. We really had to work hard with our Dacron sails to make that shape happen. A lot of tweaking. Yeah, and he's just like, oh, it's up. We'll be on starboard tack. Our port side sheet's going to be our working sheet. We'll be about 100 degrees. We have nine knots of breeze. And we're going to have a great sail. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm backing up. Okay. Stay to watch that line behind you. Man, you can feel the speed pick up. <laughs> it's a huge sail. In fact, I'm gonna go ultra wide so you can try and see it all. This is the one thing we never do as cruisers. Go sailing for the sake of sailing. Because there's typically a dive, a surf, or the call of another island motivating the move. But today's motivation is a test sail. To see all points of sail and find out how many sails does it take to cruise around the world. If you ask a sailmaker, it's all of them. <laughs> but if you ask these always cherry pick your weather window cruisers, it's all about taking advantage of these light wind days. Woohoo! Ow! Here we go. Basic hands, three sails. Woohoo! Woo look, makes us look like we know what we're doing. <laughs> I know it's a little warpy, but at least you can see all the sails. So we've got the spinnaker stay sail up and the. It's the drifter, right, Frank? Drifter. Yep. Spinnaker stay sail up and the drifter and the main of course and we are doing nine and a half knots speed over ground in 12 knots of true wind Sick Awesome Your wish is my every command Oh okay. my god How many knots of speed are we gonna get here? <laughs> I don't know but it's got a ton of water in it <laughs> <laughs> we are flipping along nicely on a day where if we were on curiosity right now with only 13 knots of true wind we might be doing five knots i would say that that would probably so i mean we're doing four knots faster than that that's yeah. almost double the speed that is significantly different. I mean, when you're talking about a short sail, that could mean you can get there hours earlier. If you're talking about a long sail, you're talking about days earlier. We woke up this morning and there was between four and seven knots of wind, and we were still gonna come out, and it could drop down, but this boat will still move. Curiosity, forget about it. We're now motoring at that point. We didn't have at least 10 knots of wind. We're not sailing. So, this, this is what it's about. Maximizing your sail time, minimizing motoring time. That is what a performance boat to me means. So our 
our starboard dagger board is up while our port dagger board is down. I feel like I should also say we are out in the open ocean, so it's not like we're inside the atoll or in any sort of protection. This is what it's like sailing at 10 to 12 knots of true wind. It's just so nice, and that's what I'm most looking forward to because I get a tendency to get seasick if the seas are really big or super sloppy and I'm really focused on something, um, like reefing a sail back on Curiosity. We're starting to get like 23, 24 knots of wind, so we decided to throw in another reef on the mainsail, and of course the, the attachment point is seized. You okay? You not feeling good? Yeah. Can you get the yep. Will not report. So I am most excited about this type of light wind sailing. Being able to move at 10 knots of speed in such light winds with comfortable seas. This is like mwah, heaven. Heaven. We are just trying to get to the edge of the atoll and as soon as we get past this little tip here, then we'll be able to crack off and that will be like the optimal angle for these sails that we have up and we're going to try to see how much speed we can get. While the Frank, here are terrible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> While Frank makes his breakfast, I'm gonna give us a little audio check down here. Yep. Barely hear anything. Forward. Our messy equipment room. This is the forward starboard side. And the head. Dang, I missed it. We are wrapping up the uh, stay cell spinnaker and the drifter. I'll explain in a minute. Here it goes. So the drifter is like a big downwind, light wind sail. And what they have is a top down furler. And they said the benefit of that is it doesn't rely on a stay, so it can be wrapped and you don't have to have a sock. So it makes it really easy to. Furl and unfurl versus ours, like we had the big Jenniker that we had a sock, we had to pull down the sock and there's all these lines going everywhere. They just use a winch and a sheet, just like any of the other head sails. So today is just a day sail and what we want to do is see how the boat performs in lighter air. Now we are turning upwind a hair with the Genoa or the Solent out and we're going to make a better angle so when we turn to head back to the atoll we have 130 degrees and they said that's where the reacher or I'm sorry the drifter really shines and we should be able to do more than 10 knots of speed at 130 with the drifter. That is unbelievable. Right now our true wind speed is varying between 12 and 14 really. And we're doing nine knots, it's just nuts. It's awesome. Yeah. It's such a calm sea. That's yeah. what's really delightful about it. Just to be able to sail nine, ten knots we... in the seas like this. Oh, here comes the rain. I should come in to the galley and show you the 360 degree view that you get even when you're inside.
and take you over to the nav desk area and show you kind of what the view is from there. This is eye level sitting. This is eye level standing. And Frank's favorite spot. He puts his back here, his feet on the poof. This is the eye level view for that. Not a bad spot. It's actually more comfortable than I expected when he showed me. This is where he normally sits at night, he said, and when it's really cold outside or super rain. Now we're gonna roll in all of our upwind sails, turn around, and head back in. So that was the drifter, and now the Spinnaker staysail. Ow! Uh -oh. Yeah! Now we're at 110 true wind angle doing 12 knots. 16 knots of true wind speed. It is interesting that by adding the spinnaker stay sail, it gave us about an extra knot versus right before they deployed. So, so funny that, you know, it's just a knot, but one knot can be a lot. Yep, especially on a passage. Mm -hmm. slowly dropping down and the angle just keeps getting deeper and deeper so Just like that, Maine is there down. Spinnaker stay some to get it out of the way because we're about to turn in and sorry I gotta focus. Yeah. Ready? Because we're about to turn in and we just put the mainsail away and then we will sail in on drifter alone. That line a little bit better. Don't judge me. <laughs> Such an easy setup. 
I love it. Easy peasy. It's such a baby sale compared to the rest of them, so it truly is easy. I don't know where that line goes, so it's just gonna live there for a bit. <laughs> Boat speed has dropped to about four and a half because our wind speed has dropped to about eight and a half. So we're kind of just bobbing around on the drifter alone, but that's also because we have got to go into the pass. So this is kind of just, you know, you just, you move slow and trust me, four and a half knots is creeping on this boat. On this boat. Bottom's not moving or barely moving, and the top is already well underway. Top down further. It's a very turbulent pass. Holy cow, it looks insane, and I've got control of the helm. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. Easy. What's it feel like? Can you feel the current? Oh, for sure. It, gets, it sort of pushes my butt around just a little bit and then tries to drive me fast and then slow me down but it's really actually pretty easy to handle. I don't know if that's just the steering or just the size of the boat or what. Um, I, I didn't, I was too tight. Can you go ahead and show me that, how, how it pushes your butt around thing right. again? Pushes my butt around like this. <laughs> yeah, sort of pushes me around. But we're almost, we're through the worst of it. No. So we're doing high speed, which is the one on the push the button down, right? Yep. Well, we got about seven knots of wind and we're going about four and a half knots of boat speed. But because we're inside the lagoon now, it just, it's such lazy sailing. I love it. It's so calm. It, it means, just makes you want to lay in the sun and take a nap or something. I don't know. Except for all those storm clouds. All right, right back there. I could do without those. We can't win them all. Take your position. Yep. Downwind. <sighs> Drinking a little local beer. Sitting on a fat boy. Champagne sailing. What's that in its all? No waves. Well, that would it be champagne sailing if you're champagne. drinking a beer? I'd have champagne if we had champagne. <laughs> You're welcome. Are you out? Man overboard. <laughs> I lost the headset. Oh, my pants are still on the, on the front. Oh, did you tell where you put them? Yeah. Okay, we'll go right up and see if they're there. While Frank was putting on the chain floats, the drifter sheet perfectly grabbed the headset and launched it into the water. Naturally, jumped in to save it. I'm assuming these are waterproof. No, I don't think so. Oh no. <laughs> Success on the pants. That's good. We'll find out on the... Oh, I don't know. Still blue. Oh, she turned it off. Okay, well, we'll see what happens.
<laughs> Never a dull moment. No, how ridiculous. It's pretty windy and rainy. Yeah. A lot going on out there. Got here just in time. He assumed he was wet, so he was going in anyway, but kind of cold. Got his headset all torn apart, blowing it out with his scuba air. See a fair amount of uh, water coming out of there. <laughs> it's been a beautiful day to be out at sea, and we've soaked up a ton of practical knowledge. And not just today, but throughout our time aboard. And so far, the running theme with Frank and Mary Grace is it's gotta be fun not overly complicated or fussy. And any piece of kit or gear is about enhancing the experience. The same goes with picking weather windows, anchorages, or dare I say, who to bring along for the adventure. So Frank and Mary Grace, just for the record, we had a lot of fun today. And thank you for watching and spending this time with us. We'll see you next week. Anchor looks good. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Scuba Jason. I'm gonna go exercise a little bit. Okay. Right, so the water's warm. Oh, good. The rain's cold. The water's warm and the rain's cold. Yep. <laughs>